let's go ahead and create some VLANs. Uh, we discussed the basics of VLANs uh, prior, but now that we're getting to the point where we're about to configure them, uh, I have a couple more points to go over before we actually start coding them into the switches. So uh, when you go to create VLAN, you have a variety of numbers to choose from. So you've seen some of those maybe when I've been doing show commands, there's a couple VLAN numbers that have popped up and the ones that I've mentioned. You have two different ranges to choose from when you're making VLANs. So you have a standard range and there's an extended range. Your standard range uh, is numbered from 1 through 1005. Caveat being that 1002 through 1005 are reserved for token ring and FDDI. Most likely you're not using token ring or FDDI, so you can focus on 1 through 1001. Those are the ones you'll most commonly use. These are stored on VLAN dot whoops <laughs> VLAN dot dat on uh, in our router in our switch. So you saw me do that before in reference having to delete that and such. When you delete your or when you erase your startup config and you want to blank out a device a switch completely and start it up fresh as if it were new out of the box. If you do that and remove that startup config and then reload the device, the VLAN.dat will still be there. So you have to manually delete your VLAN.dat file or the VLANs will still be there when you come up again. When it boots up, it'll have no config, but if you end up getting into the device and you do show VLAN, your old VLANs will still be there. So make sure you delete that uh, off your flash. Uh, also, VLANs 1 and then 1002 through 1005, those are automatically there. Those are automatically created uh, by the Cisco device uh, for use. Remember VLAN 1 is your default VLAN. All your switch ports are members of that to begin with. Uh, so we want to move off of that. Those are there for you automatically. So you'll end up creating VLANs from 2 to 1001 essentially. Your extended range are 1006 up through 4094. So you have a very large range there. Unfortunately though, they're kind of like temporary VLANs in a way, whereas these are permanent ones that get stored to your VLAN.dat file. They are not stored on your VLAN.dat. They are also not learned through VTP, so they're really not all that helpful necessarily, uh, depending on your use, but not through VTP. And VTP is the VLAN trunking protocol. We'll talk about that more coming up. Uh, there's, I'll, I'll make a little mark down here for it, the VLAN trunking protocol. Uh, it's a Cisco proprietary uh, protocol and what it does is it allows uh, you to more easily manage your VLANs throughout all your switches so you, you might be thinking now okay if I'm making these VLANs and I'm associating them to a bunch of different ports on my switches you know what if I have a hundred different VLANs and I have a hundred different switches out there when I add a VLAN that I'm going to you know, extend my network a little bit and I add a VLAN, well now I'm going to have to go to all these different switches and add that VLAN to it. The trunking protocol, VTP, will take care of that for you. So you go into, the idea being you go into your master switch, you add VLAN you know, 101 or something like that, and then it will then send that data down to the other switches and will update their, their VLAN databases for you. There's a standardized version of VTP uh, called GVRP. Our, so GVRP is the GARP VLAN Registration Protocol. So GVRP is your alternative 
if you do not have Cisco equipment. Or uh, sometimes there's uh, there's other VLAN protocols that are out there that are proprietary as well. But if you don't have Cisco, you probably will end up using some sort of GVRP if you wish. Uh, you could also use some sort of management uh, application to take care of it and you don't even have to use a protocol in that case. So let's go from here and we'll configure some VLANs. Let's go over to our trusty packet tracer and we're going to fire up a switch and let's add two hosts. Okay, so we're going to go into privileged exec, and now we're going to go into global config mode. In order to make a VLAN, we basically just have to say VLAN, and then whatever number we want. So we could say VLAN 2. And then I highly suggest, at this point, you could just say exit, and it'll actually make the VLAN for you. You just have to go in and say, hey, VLAN, and then boof, it, it appears. I highly suggest though that you name your VLANs. Give it some sort of descriptive name. Is this the IT department? Is this corporate people? Is this for printers? Whatever it is. If you don't name it, you're going to have some sort of situation where you're on, under the gun and you're trying to diagnose something and you're going to say, what the heck was VLAN 17 again? Just, just name them. It takes two seconds. Exit back out. If we do a show VLAN, now you see we have VLAN 2, IT. No ports are assigned right now. All my ports are still assigned to my default VLAN number 1. So let's go ahead and assign a port to VLAN 2. So how we do that is we're going to go back into config mode. And we're going to go into the interface that we want to assign. Now we're going to go in here and we're going to tell it it's an access port. So I'm definitely not going to remember that again. <laughs> so we're going to say switch port mode access. This, this tells it that this is an end device, a host PC, some sort of uh, thing that's not a switch. Now we're going to tell it to use a specific VLAN, switch port access VLAN 2. So now we said it's an access port and you're going to access via VLAN 2. If I show my VLAN again, now you see we have IT VLAN 2 and port 2 is assigned to it. So that's all there is to it basically. And of course, you can use the um, interface range command, and you can do the same thing over a, you know, a swath of ports. So I want to show you one thing here. So let's, um, let's give these uh, some IP addresses here. There's a reason I added two. So let's go into our fast teeth on this device, and we're going to name, which one was this? Let me find out what port this guy's on. He's on port two. Okay. So we're going to give him 2.1. So he's on a slash 24 network. So that means this is his network address. So 2. Dot is uh, his specific network. And we're going to do the same up here. And we'll make this 2.2. Why not? So they're both on the same uh, layer three network. They're all they're both on the same IP subnet. So theoretically, if both of these are plugged in to a regular old switch, they will ping each other. So let's go in and test that. If we go into our desktop, we can ping. So can I ping myself? So I'm pinging myself right now. So I know that works. I configured it correctly. Let's ping PC one. Hmm, so why isn't that working? The reason being is because we are on a different VLAN. So if we go into the switch, take a look. This bottom PC is plugged into port 2. He's on a separate network. He can't, Even though the IP is the same, I can't talk to PC1 because he is on a separate network. It doesn't matter. Remember, it's a it's a layer two technology. It does not care about what IP address you use. 
So even though I put them on the same subnet, it doesn't work. So that's something that you'll probably run into from in a troubleshooting mode uh, down the road. You'll say, well, why isn't this working? It's probably because you didn't configure the port correctly so that it's on the right subnet or it's on the right network. So let's go into port 1, which is, uh, I believe, PC1 is plugged into that. And we'll tell it it's a access port. And we're going to tell it it's on VLAN 2. And if I show my VLANs again, now ports 1 and 2 are connected. And then you'll see spanning tree is uh, doing its thing again. So just give it a second here, and it'll kick into gear. almost done. <laughs> see, when we start talking about spanning tree, you'll see why that takes a while and it's kind of a nuisance sometimes. Alright, so let's try to ping from PC0 to PC1 again. Ah, now it works. It's because we are on the same network. So I hope that makes sense. So now let's say, for example, PC0 and 1 are on the same VLAN. They're on the same network, but somebody goofed up and uh, configured the IP address incorrectly. It's, it's in a different subnet. Uh, I could also fiddle with the subnet mask too, but let's just change this IP to something different that's obviously wrong. If I go in there and I try to ping him, obviously that's not going to work because it's not his IP address anymore. So let's wait for this, wait for this to time out. We're going to try to ping it on its new address, 1.2. So we get four attempts. It's going to time out four times. There we go. I'm going to try that. And that should work. Ah, oh, wait, no, it doesn't. See? So the reason being, <laughs> the reason being is because we, even though we're on the same network, well, now we're trying to communicate. We're on the same layer 2 network, so it's as if we were hooked into the same switch physically with no configuration done. But, or yeah, basically the idea is uh, we're, we're essentially connected directly. I mean, we, we only have two ports configured on this switch. It's, it's almost as if we're directly connected to each other. But, uh, the layer 3 addressing doesn't match up now. So that's something else you'll have to look at. So you have to make sure that things are in the right VLANs and that the subnet masks are correct, the IP schemes are, the, the IP addresses are correct. Those are things you want to look at uh, that are very important. Uh, if you have one little typo, you could ruin your day for a period of time. Now I can actually ping them correctly again. So let's go look back into the switch and we'll do little show commands again. Get back to our privileged exec mode. Uh, we can do show VLANs as we've seen. We can also do show VLAN brief which will show a little bit less information for us. You can see it uh, cropped out some of the other data that was above. Which is a nice little printout. Uh, it's nice to get this off of a lot of your switches to have an idea when you go walk into a closet what ports you can plug things into and expect to get onto certain networks. I highly suggest having that information ready uh, for whoever's going into closets and doing physical connections. Uh, otherwise they could cause problems. Not just not get connection, but they could cause issues with the whatever's on those networks. We can also do show interfaces and then the VLAN. Well, that would help if I actually made the interface, wouldn't it? <laughs> so if I, uh, that's going to show our SVI interface, and uh, I, I forgot I didn't make that. So we'll have to go in, and we're going to make an interface VLAN 2. And then I'm going to give it, just for fun, some sort of IP, and we'll call it whatever, 99. We'll turn it on. And there we go, we'll show interfaces VLAN 2. There we go. And that'll show the information about that SVI that we created, that VLAN 2 IP. Uh, and also, what's interesting, we'll, we'll show this here. So we are on VLAN 2 um, for these two computers. We also have a management address now, 2.99, a management address assigned to VLAN 2 interface, and that's up. So what I should be able to do is get from PC0 to that switch, yes? 
So let's go in and set some uh, login information, see if I can get to it. So let's go into, uh, we'll, we'll make an enable secret. So that way I can get into privileged exec mode. And let's go into line VTY0515 and we will set it with a just a regular password. Say we need to require a login. There we go. See if we can get to this switch. So if I go to this guy, and we'll just open up that. We should be able to tell net to it. So I made that 2.99, right? There we go. And then if I type enable, it'll ask me for my password. And now I'm in. So now I'm actually remotely accessing it through that SVI that I created through a specific interface, through a specific VLAN. If I were to connect into any of the other ports on this switch, those would not work. If I were plugged into port 3, for example, that's on VLAN 1. VLAN 1 can't get to this management address because it's not on VLAN 2. So that's how you move your management address off of the uh, default VLAN of 1. You create a specific SVI for whatever VLAN you want to use as your management network. So this, uh, notice how I named this one IT. So this VLAN could essentially be our management network. Uh, and then all of our switches and, and everything else in our network could be on uh, VLAN 2 and have a management address associated to it for VLAN 2. So uh, that's something that uh, is recommended. So from here we'll go and start creating some VLAN trunks. So we'll, now that we have some devices connected to some switches, uh, we'll start connecting some switches together and we'll show trunks actually working.